React India. Yeah. Uh, hey guys, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Vishal Naidu. I am from Mumbai, author of Root JS and App Crumbs. Uh, yeah, we are working on App Crumbs for now. Uh, apart from my work, I do a lot of cooking, paintings, and uh, yes, of course, I, I I read a lot of books as well, articles. So yeah, keep myself updated. Uh, well, uh, before moving ahead, I really want you to. I mean, I know that uh, since morning it's been like fantastic in a rush of information and uh, you know and fantastic talks coming across one by one, right back from each other. Uh, I just want you to uh, make yourself comfortable for a next ride uh, and don't take it as a presentation. I would say uh, take it more like a storytelling. Uh, because I know uh, human brain, they normally don't be active, actively, you know, participating in presentations and and grasping, you know, informations continuously. So uh, I know you have taken a lot. So let this particular slide just uh, make you feel free and enjoy the ride from here. So what am I going to explain you about is intelligent user interface. Uh, and if we have all heard about user interface, then how come, what exactly is intelligent user interface? It's a broader term we'll be discussing throughout a slide, a platform which helps in building and orchestrating human computer interactions with the help of computational intelligence. So how is the AI computational intelligence going to help us in building user interfaces, building and also orchestrating, as I mentioned. So what are you going to learn in the next 30 minutes? I'll not say basically learn, but yes, um, uh, maybe here in the next 30 minutes. Uh, so it's about what is IUI, uh, intelligent user interface, uh, evolution of user interface, how user UI has been, you know, evolved since uh, the time we have started to see them as very flat, uh, not very interactive elements and uh, web pages or desktop applications to, to today where we see them fantastically made pretty much interactive, uh, very informative, right? So how has the evolution taken place? Uh, UI at its current form. So in the in, in between the evolution, we also discuss more about where it is today and what probable uh, ways it can take it in the coming uh, future, right? How can I change, like how can IUI change the way we are creating UI today? Yes, of course. How So in, in short, I would like to mention how AI is going to help us uh, make UI tomorrow, right? And how it is going to impact the UI developers, UX designers, uh in the future what does the statistics claim so we're also going to see some forms of statistics we really don't have much data online with respect to how ai is going to impact the ui uh with the limited data what i had and with the similarities what i can pick up i have picked them up nitpicking cherry picking them up and i put it across to you with the sensible uh way we're going to see them in the later stages should we accept the change uh yes we're going to see that whether we're going to discuss on the key points after we understand this entire environment about what it's going to be. So should we really go with the change? We're going to discuss on that. What can you expect as an UI developer in the coming next 10 years? Uh, of course, this is the question. I mean, I'm also an educator. So this question has been like asked to me each and every time whenever I'm speaking about uh, giving a speech or even I'm teaching across on this UI uh, modules. Uh, what change should you be prepared for? Of course, these are like two favorite questions which I've been asked. We're going to discuss on that as well in the coming slides. And that's what the roller coaster uh, ride for the next 30 minutes, 27 minutes is going to be. What is user interface? Uh, we know what user interface is, but let's uh, let's go through it. Many of them do uh, do know it, but some do not put it in the right way. So it's like a space for human computer interaction or communication on a device, web page or an app. So not really a button or a drop down. There are modes of it. But when you speak about user interface, a space that gives you to interact with the human and the computer, that's probably called as the user interface. Um, as I mentioned, desktop apps, web apps, and mobile apps pretty much cover them all, uh, like the types of user interface. Now, how will intelligence help in this particular aspect? So now we're going to step into the main aspect of how intelligence will help it. Uh, that is basically how AI will start stepping up into it. Now, uh, let me give you a very simple example. Now, I'm a, I've been a UI developer since more than 12 years uh, from now, and uh, I have a kid, and I do a lot of experimentation on how basically my kid tried to learn things across from observing, and how does uh, she and he both try to manipulate those observations, right? So that's where I've come up with. So whatever I've written over here are all 
uh, my drafting of information across. So learning is observing and storing of information. So I do, a, I have done a small example uh, for my kids. So what I do is when I was playing, uh, when she was two years old and when she was, she was playing with me, uh, we had this, uh, uh, you know, this plastic balls, a uh, different colored ones. And someone asked, uh, like, what is your favorite color? Uh, I picked up the red. And every time I was asked what was my favorite color, I always picked up the red. Now my kid, uh, after two, a couple of days, two to three days later, when uh, she was there, I asked her, what's your favorite color? And she, without an instance, picked up the red. Why? Because uh, she was learning, right? So she observed and stored that information that whenever it's a favorite color, it has to be red, right? Because the intelligence hasn't grown up yet. Right. And when uh, tomorrow, maybe when she's grown up or a teen or some when she starts understanding things and starts using those complex algorithms in her brain about observing and storing this information, what she has been done since her kid or toddler time, <clears throat> uh, she's going to compare those information, right? So she might correlate blue with the sky and the water and the greens with the trees across, and she might come up with no, I probably I'll change my decision now, and it's going to be green as my favorite color and not red. Why? Because now she has started using her intelligence, right? That's where the intelligence comes in. So intelligence will obviously come in on top of your observation and the information you're stored by learning it, right? So many of them also I come across to mess between ML and AI. They both are quite different, <clears throat> but they go hand in hand. Now, coming up with an example of how uh, AI has started up with the, uh, you know, with, within the department of uh, UI and uh, building applications, uh, especially in the in the developer uh, you know a zone. So if you so if you, if you see over here, uh, there are two parts of it, right? Where uh, intelligence helps us in the application department. It's orchestrating it. That means helping the consumers to use those applications better, or would help us to build the applications better. That is for developers, and orchestration is more towards the consumers' target, right? Uh, now, when you see orchestration, I think it was long, long back when these things were already used. You might have heard about Clippy. You know, uh, in WinWord, uh, Microsoft WinWord uh, used to have an assistant called as Clippy. Very, uh, I mean, that was one which really fascinated me about how uh, an assistant can help you, a virtual assistant can help you uh, know things better within that particular <clears throat> constrained uh, environment. You know. And Clippy, it, it was very uh, limited because it had access to only WinWord and it was built on a limited database. What to be done, he, he was very clear on that. He would not learn to do something different than what he was built to do, right? That's where the orchestration comes into picture where orchestration would definitely be limited to a particular data set and not to the learning part of it. Right. But adding more learning entities to it, we are seeing examples of chat GPT. I put a question mark over there because I don't really feel chat GPT has reached to that level where uh, we can definitely build up end to end application and, you know, customize build end to end application right now. Yes, it does help us in most of the activities in building, but we really haven't reached to that level yet. And that's one of the reasons why I did add chat GPT as an example for building uh, you know, uh, where AI can help us building applications, but not to the level yet. So we see the, uh, the evolution of AI. Now, what we're going to do is first, we're going to see how evolution in, uh, evolution of AI into, uh, the digital world has come into picture. And then how is it going to compare the same evolution to the development department later on? Right? So first is a traditional AI. Uh, what is a traditional AI? That's where we see uh, more of the virtual assistant, the uh, you know natural language processors which have been built. It's more about understanding uh, the communication barrier which we had earlier, and then once you understand, convert them into a logical entities, and with the uh, required set of data what we have currently, you just logical compare and provide the output to the and provide a better user experience to the users. Going with the generative AI, that's where we are currently living in. So it goes one step beyond it, right? You see, um, it, it, it also processes different data, like in terms of images and videos, right? And not only text this time, it also manipulates the data what we have. For example, if you see uh, a face recognition system, uh, if you build it on a traditional AI, it might have a certain set of data. Maybe say example, I clean shave myself and 
Rumahe properly and have that particular photograph to be compared for. So traditional AI will only give me a good match if I am somewhere near to the same image. But the generative AI, every time my facial grooming changes, it will keep that, it will keep on learning those and also store those set of data across, right? It will store the additional data so that whenever I come up with something new, uh, a new facial uh, grooming or something, it might not be difficult for it to give me a better match tomorrow. Okay. So that's where generative AI keeps on learning and creating and manipulating the data, which it already learned long way back, right? And using it across multiple data types, its images or videos. Now coming on, what is the future, the newer future, which is coming in? That's Gen 1. Now, what is Gen 1? Gen 1 is going to be multi-model AI system, okay, which will help you to create complex data forms with references, okay? So, for example, let's consider one of the famous person, like say, Sir Albert Einstein. Now, uh, we have seen a lot of videos where uh, Sir Albert Einstein or Sir Steve Jobs is like, is like, you know, they are on the video and speaking something. They have facial expressions and they're trying to tell you a story or a speech. <clears throat> Now, how is that possible? Because you already had those data and with the help of those data and with the help of the comparisons of how the facial expression changes, we have amalgamation of all this into an intelligence form to provide you that experience of a person who's not really alive and they're trying to speak in front of you. <clears throat> Sorry, right? That's Gen 1. If you're scared, wait for the Gen 2. Gen 2 is way beyond that. Uh, I don't know about how, how many of you have seen this commercial which has come across where uh, a mother, she puts her five years baby photograph online and she has been putting that since she, the baby was around one years old. And suddenly the AI forms the same baby's 20 years later image. She's on the screen and she's speaking to her parents. How did that, how was that possible? So Gen 2 is based on Gen 1, but it can also be able to create imaginary complex forms of data, which it doesn't have right now, with the reference of some things which it had for a limited time. For example, <clears throat> now the baby's photos were there only from the age 1 to 5 and not until 20. But this Gen 2 uh, platform will be able, the AI system can will be able to create and you know, compare that baby's facial expression, uh, maybe the face with some other babies, which are and how these babies grew up to be, you know, how they looked after some time, study those, uh, the changes in the facial expressions happened when compared to the parents and then compared to the existing data and give you that look and feel of how your baby will look like after 20 years of age. Scary enough, right? And But that's where we are moving up to. And that's Gen 2. That's just Gen 2, I'm saying, because... I think this is where we have defined a limit till there's more to it. We haven't defined what Gen 3, 4, 5 is going to be. But let me restrict it to Gen 2 because I think that's more than enough for us to digest and get scared of today. So uh, prank time, I have added a little bit of bits and pieces. I see Joker saying is really being, uh, you know, fitting in this particular scenario. So as it's a storytelling, I also want it to be a little funny here. Uh, it's a little funny and also very scary. So let's go ahead with what Joker says to the to the scenarios what I have discussed here. <clears throat> it was funny, or it's funny, when I was a little boy and told people that AI will eat your job. Everyone laughed at me when no one's laughing right now. So I know I've changed a bit where it's AI, but I, I think you get the uh, the anecdote what I'm trying to mention here, right? So it's not going to eat your job, but maybe you can. <laughs> so let's go ahead and see what questions we have answered up till now or what things we have covered. Uh, so we have covered the, uh, the top three and the rest is now remaining. I'm going to speak about what, how can UI change the way we are creating UI today. So let's see, see about how can we automate UI or how the process of automating UI can be taken. I'm also going to give you a small gist about uh, a process, okay, a small uh, example or a code snippet uh, an idea how you can automate something which you can uh, you know design on figma download it as a part of a vector image svg image convert that design directly into and build a logic like you need you need to build a logic over it 
and convert it into an actual React component. So an automation from a design on the Figma to an actual React component can be done. I'll be giving you a gist about that. I could have given you a, work, a working uh, experience about it, but it would have really been extended beyond 30 minutes and that's why I restricted to it. Uh, well, let's see what is automating UI. Now we have seen the evolution of how AI is going to take ahead. Let's compare the evolution of AI into the field of application development. Okay, that was more on the generic term. This is more pertaining towards the uh, development of UI and applications together. <clears throat> now, I did put UI components that's somewhere far behind uh, in the past what we have done. I do consider it as a kind of an intelligent act because uh, we used to create all the UIs or, or with forms, etc., the input boxes, buttons, style them uh, from the basic for every applications, right? But we, we created components, UI components, which were readily available for us to use. From those UI components, we started automating the UI templates. How come UI templates? Today, if you see, we, we create a small chunk, like for example, registration form. Ask the chat GPT to create a registration form for you. It can definitely create one, right? <clears throat> With the minimal inputs, it can actually give you an UI templated output, which is pretty much uh, available today. And we've already moved from this particular phase to the phase where we can automate defined modular applications. Now, what are defined modular applications? I think maybe uh, it's not about the single template, but create an entire application, or maybe an e-commerce app with a page, with a with a search page like this, with a, a payment page needs to be something like that. I mean, X Y Z as your requirements. But yes, uh, not to the level of customization which I expect it to be. But yeah, to a decent level of customization, it is achievable today. Uh, automation of these applications from scratch can be done, right? And ChatGPT4 can definitely take care of these things. So we have that's the reason I've already mentioned this over here. It's a little bit towards a green other than blue because we are we are moving in that direction. And more, more probably by the year or a half uh, from today, we are going to be on the path where defined model applications are automated. But what is the future of after that it's scary but let's let's go through them it's good. the the ai systems can now architect multi-modal application multi-modal applications in sense um you give me a requirement don't tell me what to use for example uh what application do you want to build don't tell me whether i need to use sql or oracle elastic search or mongodb any database right what service layer do I need to use? Is it Java or is it something other language I need to use across? Any frameworks which I need to use on the front end? Is it Angular, Vue, or React? You don't tell me. You don't specify that. It's not developer specific. It's more about user specific. Just tell me what your requirement is and the AI system will start using them. It will adopt on the basis of your requirement. It will choose the technology what it needs the best fits your requirement. And it will architect their entire application framework for you and give it to you to run it on your local right now. Isn't it scary? If you see that is scary, then let us see what the next stage is going to be, the more mature stage of uh, what I feel currently. It can be way beyond that also. Definitely is going to be there. But what I see, the most scariest part is it can also automate the entire ecosystem of your application. For example, you ask me something, it will be deployed. You give them, you give the AI system the... Uh, the domain which you want to be deployed at, it will deploy that particular application on that domain and it will be ready on a click of a button. You start your business today, right after the click of a button. At that level, along with the customization, of course, when you ask me, will there not be any uh, customization in terms of manual development needed? Yes, of course, manual tweakings, developments will definitely be required, but not at the level of what the previous ages required. Right. You see that you come back from the uh, from the extreme last to the previous ages. The amount of manual interventions required that won't be required at that moment. So the last is where we see the entire things what we are doing today, building the applications, deploying, testing. Most of the entire ecosystem will be automated and will be there. Yeah. When you ask me how much time will it take, yeah, definitely it will take beyond ten years timeline. Uh, 10 years when I say is maybe by 2030. Uh, I know it's not 10 years, seven years from now. Uh, but yes, we're going to see start seeing the effects of the entire ecosystem of applications to be automated by the by the start of 2030.
how am i saying that well i i, I as i mentioned i do read a lot of articles i i have come across a lot of studies and i say uh, a lot of multi uh, multi million dollar companies are already on to the path of it uh, it's just that they don't roll off a lot of information with respect to it but when you when you start reading be- between the lines you get the information totally so automating ui templates yeah this is the example that i have mentioned yeah i'm not i'm not to the part where i'm explaining you how to define model applications and automate it but yeah a small and a very basic example because it will be a little intuitive to those who have not come across this part yet uh, to go through this particular process of automating ui templates now while automating ui templates there are two ways you can do that either you build a machine learning model with thousands of images which will define okay this is an image or this is a button this is a drop down this is an input box and basically convert them into an actual application uh, which has been done right but when you go and build it you need thousands of data to be created which is not ideal uh, for you to do it at home so i'll give you a vector based computational intelligence which is a little bit of uh, orthodox way of doing it uh, but yeah you can try at least 3 years from today uh, it was a preferred way of doing it but today you can see it's already outdated by the evolution of chat gpt so if you see uh, how can we achieve this a small presentation uh, for how can you do that you take figma miro or adobe xd you define your design your application the way you need it or maybe a snippet of it maybe a card you can just define a card of uh, a small card and then when you download it make sure you, you select the svg scalable vector graphic because they are in nature xml right so it's better to pass them into json xml can be passed into json but you need identifiers to be added so before you design on to figma miro and xd you need to have design kits which will have identifiers identifiers right example i have a button i'll, I'll give you the examples how it's going to be say example you have a button and the button is an svg which you are using inside the figma those svgs need to have what kind of button it is what properties of the button so you add the type of button you add the properties to it and those identifiers will be then read during the passing uh, a stage where your svg is passed to json and then those json can directly be converted to whichever you output you select is either going to be react angular view or html now let's see how it's going to be in reality i've given you a simple example i've done a lot of uh, experiments on this i was able to uh, possibly uh, come up with an entire page of automation uh, yeah uh, due to some uh, ongoing process and development activity i would not be able to show it to you across but i'll give you a small a small snippet of how it was achievable uh, this is the ui design kits which we we are going to export uh, import it to figma to use to design your application now i'm considering only buttons here you see there are three different types of buttons it's uh, the primary the outline and the tonal the solid button basically so you see over here on the react uh, svg we have mentioned type equals to button right and the id is given so that that id is connected to your text you know in svg is morely you cannot name your rectangles you need to have a text right below the rectangle tag right so uh, now you know that that text belongs to that particular id that's the reason we have used for attribute there these are custom attribute like the type and the props we have used uh, variant is primary that's how we are bifurcating between uh, how can we put it inside a string okay and that string can be converted into object in the later stage now if you see the things everything is the same just a variant of primary outline and tonal has been changed at the other places now moving to the next uh, stage where pass json when when you pass that svg you get a json output how the json output can be uh, seen over here uh, is like i mean there will be multiple other properties mentioned but let's stick to the point which is required for us so component is going to be button props are going to be like having variant as primary and children as button so you know when it is children for react it automatically going to be between the button tags right so now from here you can convert it to whichever language you want an output as because a json is like more on the uh, on a on a platform which is more commonly recognized by multiple other frameworks to be converted to so from this particular aspect i think it's pretty much easier for you to convert it into the react components being button variant and this when you convert it into this you place it onto your actual react component and export it and that's where you get the automated line now this entire process happens in one go right uh, from the time you have uh, designed on figma exported as an svg imported as svg on a particular platform sorry and the and that particular logic is written by you 
click on the button of export and then you export this entire ui across all right um well i'm not able to see what questions you're asking but definitely um if there are any questions you can reach out to me i will i will definitely help you to do that uh, do this particular experimentation if you are stuck in any of the process uh, so until now we have covered another important factor of how can iui change the way we are creating ui today right so i mentioned you a brief about it but what does the statistics claim uh, where are we going what direction are we moving in and what are the statistics claim we are going to see that in the next slides ah it's a prank time again this prank is one of my favorite pranks and i definitely would want you to uh, pay attention a bit over here and read them i'll read it for you so there is a conversation between a developer and the joker i i don't need to give you a introduction about the joker right so uh, so this is a developer on the left hand side and the joker is applying on the right hand side the developer is saying that i'm working on an idea which would transform the way we develop ui the joker is saying what is that i mean i i try to enact joker here uh, pardon me if i'm not exact we are not good at it a, a platform which can automate the developer is saying a platform which can automate ui templates and some of its logic now why would you want to do that the developer says this will reduce the efforts time and workforce the joker smiles which was painful for him and says i was right when the chips are down the civilized people they'll eat each other <laughs> so uh, it's an anecdote it's uh, take it as a prank but definitely we also need to pay attention to what exactly we are trying to achieve are we uh, are we actually cutting the branch on where we are sitting or we are basically growing a new one there is a limit for everything and you know, evolution of everything so i think we need to really think about it and what exactly does the statistics and the case study say let's go for that this is my case study i could have mentioned a lot of details here but as i mentioned due to the time constraint i need to put what exactly has been mentioned here so it's a mechanical engineering jobs if you see have been seen a gradual drop since 1990s why because that's a time when computational uh, uh, existence started into coming picture not the intelligence but computers started to be existent from 1990s it started getting more matured and started to Uh, give more birth to the electronic departments and uh, you know uh, exa example uh, i would not say the name of the company uh, but i could say that one company an automobile company which was having around 1000 workforce was cut down to 200 uh, just because uh, the machines uh, were involved in making automobiles right manufacturing automobiles so manufacturing sectors uh, fabrication sectors uh, aeronautics uh, mechanical engineering whichever you can see wherever there has been industrializations there has been automations of in my machines which have taken up the core jobs of the uh, you know the labors across uh, but but it also gave uh, birth to the different sectors of jobs that is also one thing which we need to understand but yeah 200 like from 1000 200 employees were there but more to more 200 jobs were created but still when you see the comparison from 1000 to 400 you still have a lag of 600 which you cannot cover up because uh, that's the reality of life uh, a new jobs to be created you need to adapt to them but obviously adapting to a new uh, job or a new stream uh, will not exactly going to give you the same density of uh, job what is going to be given by the previous techs yeah but that is what we want to live like as the population is increasing we need to probably stick to that particular uh, survival to the fittest one so automation has given birth to many other fields like cad for example as i mentioned multiple different fields uh, were taken place i mean uh, birth and then uh, they moved ahead from that uh, movement onwards you know and ai market is expected to grow from 100 billion dollars to nearly 2 trillion dollars by 2030 this involves ai being a part of all different parts right you know maybe in automobile and any other uh, sectors every sector i'm saying about when you compare it with the ui ux market you see ui ux market is going to go from 1.4 billion dollars at a cagr rate of 18 to around 3.9 billion dollars this is still an estimation part um, most of the sites which mention they sometimes mention 3.7 some is mentioning 4.2 and some is like 3.6 so it's somewhere near 3.6 to 4.2 you can get the uh, combination of it to 3.9 billion dollars it's what we are seeing to grow right in the future now 
when now you need to know when to stop this is very important any technology you go beyond a particular limit is going to bite you back so uh, example as i mentioned like we we saw a prank where a developer is trying to uh, create something which is going to automate and indirectly uh, you know reduce the efforts used by another developer so we need to know when to stop now what are those things which we really need to pay attention on see all companies now let us see a scenario this is a basically a cycle a vicious cycle which you all might be aware of but when you put across everything you can connect the dots and you understand much better okay so when i talk about where the ai is going 10 years from now this is how it's going to be all companies adopt ai and ml for automation right this is a scenario i'm talking about right what's going to happen and it is currently already started so all companies adopt ai ml for automation resulting in job cuts and less wages due to the competition increase right less wages will result into less consumers okay giving birth to less consumers because you're not going to purchase expensive products so i not subscribe to the uh, expensive phones coming across and getting launched very recently less consumers will affect organizations in cutting more jobs resulting in a massive and more occurrent or reoccurrent recessions here and there if you see the recession graph since the last years uh, last almost uh, maybe somewhere near 80 years you'll see that they have been occurred more frequently and the impact of has impact of it has been more but you see the 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 recession has not stayed till longer but it is more frequent so you need to understand that it will give birth to new jobs while well, there will also be job cuts right so that curve is going to be more frequent like you'll see you start seeing recessions in lesser years in coming time and it's going to go away also in less uh, time span that's what the entire uh, you know case study which i have done for this uh, points out to bs now again a prank time this is the uh, okay this is the jokers ai ml mentions here introduce a little anarchy i would rather mention artificial intelligence or intelligence here introduce a little anarchy upset the established order and everything becomes a chaos i am the agent of chaos yes ai enable used until the point where it is required for the betterment of something to be built it is a boon beyond that it's going to be a chaos and i think we have already started moving up to that level but yeah if you restrict it and that's betterment for us and for everyone i mean say not only developers the people who are working for the manufacturing industries as well uh and if you restrict it to a particular limit it's good beyond that definitely it's going to be chaos so after uh, such a, a intense storytelling uh, i'm going to ask you why are so serious uh, you don't have to be any more there are more uh, talks coming in for you thank you for now this is tishan naidu signing out thank you very much guys i hope you enjoyed it